team keep it clean freelancer in the building baby what's going on it's engraving here with another video now uh if this rumor is true because matthew berry said he heard this if it is true i don't think there will be one ravens fan that would be surprised at all because alan lazard is a name that we have floated around a lot a lot of Ravens fans have floated around a lot because it would be very Raven-esque of the Ravens to go after a receiver of his caliber. Not saying Alan Lazard is bad. I'm not saying that at all. But Alan Lazard is not a top guy. Now, it's possible that he could go to a new team, go to a new setting, go to a new work environment, go to a completely new place. And he could go shine. He can go do his thing. We've seen receivers do that in the past. It happens a lot. Could it happen with the Baltimore Ravens? It's possible. But anyway, let's look at the article. I'm not going to read the quote that was affiliated with their interest. Well, it's not saying that this quote came from the Ravens or it came from uh, the Chiefs. But somebody apparently says something. And I'm, I'll let y'all go find that out for yourself, what they said, apparently. But anyway. Uh, Matthew Berry's article says my source goes on to explain that that was a phrase he heard about Lazard again I'll let you look up the phrase for yourself uh, one of the top free agent wide receivers this year in a fairly thin class I heard both the Ravens and Chiefs really like Lazard and my sense is that Lazard returning to Green Bay is not out of the question but an unlikely outcome so Alan Lazard big big body receiver 6'5 uh, obviously got plenty of experience played a lot with uh, Aaron Rodgers uh, but when you look at his numbers, obviously Green Bay, they are pads heavy off. I mean, you got Aaron Rodgers. Um, but you look at his numbers, the, the most yards that he's ever posted in the season was this past season. Uh, 788 yards. He had six touchdowns, 60 receptions. Um, other than that, 2021, he had 40 receptions for 513 yards, but eight touchdowns. Uh, in 2020, he had 46 catch. Oh, excuse me, 33 catches for 451 yards and three touchdowns. And in 2019, he had 35 catches, 477 yards, and three touchdowns. So, the production hasn't been there, but we do realize he did. He he usually had a lot of people playing in front of him, or some significant people playing in front of him. I mean, like a Devonte Adams. So we get it, uh, but it would. Like, if they sign Alan Lazard, it would be one of those, oh, okay, that's cool. It, it, it's, it's a solid signing, and we would obviously hope for the best. But if, they, if it is true that they are interested in him, like I said, no, nobody is shocked from that. Now, we talked about Alan Lazard. I, I had something else that I wanted to go over with y'all that was also from uh, this same article. Um, and he, Matthew Berry, he talked about Dan Snyder and talked about the possibility of Dan getting ready to sell the commanders and whatnot. But he said that Dan could actually go out with a little bang. Well, let's let, let's let's read and we'll go over what I'm talking about. Uh, he said Daniel Snyder's thought process is also weirdly tied to Lamar Jackson. But before we get there, let's talk about what the Ravens will do with Lamar. There are many, many theories and reports out there, but my friend and colleague Mike Florio of Pro Football Talk put this out there during Super Bowl week, and I've seen a lot of others much, much later echo this, that the most likely scenario is that the Ravens use the non-exclusive franchise tag on him. I know y'all know everything about the non-exclusive tag already, so we ain't got to explain it, and I'm so glad that we will officially know tomorrow. And now, some people have brought up a lot of good points about how this tag is beneficial to the Ravens, is beneficial to Lamar. Uh, and it's a lot that could come from it. So shout out to y'all. But anyway, let's keep going. So the idea is very simple. Lamar doesn't have an agent and the two sides have had trouble coming to anything close to an agreement. So the thinking is that Ravens say, hey, okay, Lamar, we'll head to the sideline and we will let you and some other team figure out a deal. And then once that deal is figured out, the Ravens have a choice to either match it. Great. Finally, a deal Lamar has agreed to or they get two first round picks. Now, here's the kicker. He said, uh, and this is where Dan Snyder and his mindset come into play. Florio has mentioned a few times on his radio and TV show that the one team that could sign him would be the Commanders. Uh, Lamar wants a fully guaranteed deal similar to Deshaun Watson, a crazy deal that happened because, well, the Browns were desperate and it was the only way they could get Watson, but no other QB has that kind of deal. Not Josh Allen, who was drafted in the same class. Not Patrick Mahomes. Only Watson has a fully guaranteed contract. Probably forgot about Kirk Cousins, like we all do. It happens. We all forget about Kirk Cousins and his fully guaranteed deals. But anyway, I uh, said that fully guaranteed deal with Watson secretly drove a lot of other NFL teams crazy, as you might imagine. So what if, on his way out, Dan Snyder gave Lamar Jackson what he wants, a fully guaranteed six-year deal, 
a deal he won't have to pay off <laughs> because he'll be gone. Uh, as Florio said, this will be the ultimate uh, middle finger in the eye of the power structure if Snyder does it. Also, delivering Jackson will certainly help Snyder salvage his legacy. It's a perfect win-win. Snyder sticks it to the rest of the league by resetting the QB market in an insane way and also delivers a franchise QB to Washington. Man, and that, see, that reminds me, again, of the, uh, remember the other day, the whole little video was floating around with Adam Schefter? He's like, oh, it's breaking news. Uh, Lamar Jackson and Washington, Washington, the commanders are trading for Lamar Jackson. And we all knew it was a little, we, we all knew it was a troll, but it was a weird kind of troll. And I, I think I read somewhere that Adam Schefter usually does that, like, every time he goes on that show. I don't know, the, the, the timing of it, I, uh, I don't know, it was just weird. Um, oh, and he mentions it now, he says, people may dismiss the idea because Florio's idea uh, was later used to prank the Parting My Take, the Parting My Take guys as PFT commenter uh, is a well-known Commanders fan and it went viral, but I'm told there is some actual smoke to that fire. <laughs> hey, we won't know till we know, man. We won't know till we know, but everything starts tomorrow. Everything. We just heard Ozzy Newsome. There's a clip going around of Ozzy Newsome right now. I know a lot of people going kind of crazy over that, and I'm here sitting here thinking, like, uh, he ain't really say nothing that we don't all already know. I mean, it's cool. It's, it's act, an actual Ravens person confirmed it, but I don't think <laughs> ain't nobody had to confirm that for all of us to know that they're going to put Lamar on the franchise tag if they can't agree to a deal with him. Because one thing with that we do know, one thing we know for sure, it's an absolute, that the Ravens ain't just going to let Lamar walk. Even if they have no intentions on signing him to a long-term deal, the Ravens will not at all let Lamar Jackson walk as a free agent. <laughs> you think Ravens would do? No. Of course they wouldn't. Of course they wouldn't. Even if, like I said, even if they ain't got no intention of signing him at all, they're not going to let him walk. Because you, uh, you, the minimum you could get would be them two first-round picks. And Jeff Rebick talked about it a little while ago on Twitter that, say, for instance, a, a, a team signs him to an offer sheet before the draft and they don't have a first-round draft pick this year, Ravens would just get 24 and 25 first-round draft picks, 2024 and 2025. So I, I had always wondered how that worked as far as the timing because I wasn't sure if a team um, who didn't have – Two first round pick. I mean, excuse me, who didn't have a first round pick this year, uh, how that would work. But he cleared that up for us. And I know a lot of people have been thinking the Dolphins, they could make a move for Lamar. But we'll see. Anyway, he also said one last nugget on Lamar Jackson. One source said, I think the Ravens are secretly really annoyed with Lamar and not just the contract stuff. There's other stuff, including all the missed time. Don't rule out a sign and trade. So there goes that again. We heard that again. See, you know, you know what's funny? Oh, it's actually not funny. We hear about this with Lamar. We hear the Ravens. There have been other people that have written stuff like this before as well. They say that the Ravens don't like some stuff that Lamar does. But we never hear about what it apparently or allegedly is. So we hear about, oh, the Ravens, not, they, they're not big fans of that. They don't like when Lamar does that. And, and again, not even the, the, the time that he missed, not even the injuries and stuff. Or actually, the time that he missed, yeah, it was injuries. But I wonder if that, that could have been Lamar just looking out for himself too. A mix of both being hurt, but also, I mean, <laughs> we saw that uh, the whole report card for the strength and conditioning staff. It's like, <laughs> y'all ain't about to work on me. Y'all ain't about to mess me up. I got a future. I got a future in this league. I don't want y'all to ruin it. No, man. Y'all ain't about to Quincy out of boys Joe me. Uh-uh. Y'all ain't about to Carl Davis me. Oh, no. Y'all not about to Derek Wolf me. Oh, no. I'm sure there's some other people too, but who knows? Who knows? But <sighs> thank goodness for tomorrow. Because, again, tomorrow so much starts to get cleared up on what's going to happen moving forward. So all this that we hear from this person, from that person, this story, this article, this rumor, this report, this, that, third. So much gets cleared up tomorrow. And I am so grateful that the deadline is tomorrow. It's it, like going back to even the Super Bowl. Obviously going back to when the Ravens season ended in January. 
But then even going back to the Super Bowl, the Super Bowl feels like it was ages ago. And every day we would hear something new. And it seemed like, oh, man, when the franchise tag window opens up, it seemed like it was so far away. It seemed like it was just so far away. But the fact that it's here now and on top of that, the deadline when the franchise tag window actually closes is it's tomorrow. Oh, oh, I'm so happy. I'm sorry. We made it, y'all. We made it. We, we, we actually made it to the deadline for the franchise tag. So tomorrow should be a fun day. Should be a very interesting day. And I'm sure uh, we'll have a lot to talk about in regards to this whole thing. I love y'all team. Keep it clean. I appreciate y'all team. Keep it clean. And this freelancer is out.